This is a hairpiece I've been wearing for the last two weeks or three weeks. The lines on this poly unit <clears throat> were so bad and the density so low that clearly it looked like cornfields running all the way up my scalp from the hairline. And even you could see through into the scalp through the hairs because the density was so low and the roots were just dark and line, straight lines and unacceptable. <sighs> Could have been just a density issue. Maybe that's what all, it always looks like in poly. But uh, like I say, until companies start using blonde hair pieces and keeping the roots blonde and then dyeing the rest to keep the roots nice and invisible, that's always going to be a failing. That applies to uh, lace and poly units. It's sticky, it's falling a bit. So, I need to replace that. And also, this entire year's supply of hair pieces that came from the same batch, because I can get two hair pieces out of a, out of a uh, standard hair piece size. I just don't, I'm hesitant to throw this whole box in the bin because it cost me a thousand dollars. But they're all the same as that, and it's completely unacceptable. So, I just received this package from a, from a company I've never used before. They sent it to me for free, so I could review it. But I mean, I'm not gonna do an inter infomercial for them. All right, this will be honest. Whoa, awful. Curve hair piece, wigs and hair replacement systems. Best wishes. It's like a present, isn't it? I thought hair pieces were supposed to be soft. Let's see. I'll let you see before I do. Ready? You look first. Go. Tell me what's in there. What's in there? Did I win? Okay. Okay. There's some string here. That's just for padding, I suppose, and to decorate. I don't think that was necessary. They give me a sample of this stuff. Wood tape. Three yards of easy green. Max for max two to four weeks maximum wear. Those of you who use tape can say whether that's good or not, I don't know. It's from the main company that provides hair glue and stuff. Walker Tape Company. And uh, yeah, so, box. And some string and then the hair piece itself. <clears throat> Okay. It feels light. Potentially, that means low density. Okay, the netting tied up. Good, easy to remove because I'm just going to rip it anyway. It's fine. This dome thing, standard little hair pieces. Really not necessary as far as I can see. It's a waste of uh, oil. Bad for the environment, but they want to make it look presentable. Otherwise, it just come like that. But I don't, I don't feel that would be a problem if they did that. Okay, poly. Now on here it says that stuff. Nice to see the outwards tag is not too uh, prominent. I would say that through the hairs you wouldn't be able to see that when it's pressed up against your head, which is good. Um, let's see if it peels off. They'll get a lot of points if this peels off. They use a sort of glue only we could dream about to get to get this to stay on forever. But I guess once again, this does not ooze sweat from its pores. It's just plastic, so it's unlikely to be pushing the glue off. But still, I still want to know what the hell that glue is that they use to put these things on because it's impossible to remove it. Right, it's staying on there. I feel like I've got a corner though. 
feel like I've got a little corner. If we get this thing off. Anyway, it says eight times ten four hash, which means eight by ten inches, color number four. Color number four is medium dark brown on Lord Hair's website. I think that might be an international color. Does that sort of match my hair color? I've just come out of the shower. Seems a bit golden-y compared to my hair tone. Might be too light. Just looking at it, it might be... Their version of color number four seems lighter than the one that I just threw out. I'll just get up the, um, up the color number four from Lord Hair. So this is Curve Hair Pieces Color 4. No, I did dye the front hairline, but I'm not going to show you the front hairline, which has got blonde on it. This is the color, generally, of color number 4 from Lord Hair. And this is color of number 4 from Curve Hair. See, different lighting conditions, maybe different. I can see, even in through the camera, it's a slight bit lighter whatever formula they're using for this color, number four. So it might not be com perfectly compatible with my hair color, but it is, it's very similar. I mean, it's medium dark brown. They need more, sh in, I mean, it's gotta be on the shelf stock so it's easy to sell to hundreds of people, right? You can't just find each individual person's exact hair color. But I think there should be something in between medium dark brown and dark brown. There should be like, you know, percent, give us a number, right? 70% darkness, or so. I don't know how it should work, but I'm sure there's a luminosity scale of some sort. Um, I don't know why I'm trying to fix my bald patch. I'm about to fucking shave the rest off there too. Okay, so in the past, you've seen that I've put uh, glue over the top of my actual hairs, even when they were longer than this, and then put a hairpiece over the top of that, and then it, it'll start waxing when I remove the glue. Um, there is splotches that seem to not have grown back very well, but it looks like it's mostly grown back. So that ripping out of the hairs, I don't know if it had much of an effect, but still, since I started wearing hair pieces 10 years ago, I think it was August 14, uh, 2011. It's now July 14 or something, 2021. 20, About 10 years ago, I had more hair growing there. It was less of a, prominent thing and, and there was no dissolving of these hairs that were sort of stronger right looks like there's some color this could be from the glue that was not washed out of the shower properly it's not a good look baldness is it no precious it is not all right now let's examine this one now, I'm not going to go easy on them because they sent me a free hairpiece, but thank you for sending me a free hairpiece. All right. It's all curled up at the moment. Um, porcelain, white porcelain. I'll get the tripod. I'll put this down on it and we will see. But so the, the edge is what I'm going to be concerned mostly with. What it looks like there. Is it dense enough? And are the hairs going to be very dark, straight lines like that other one that I had to just throw out because it was terrible. All right, so I'll uh, wet this whole thing. And I'll wash it and I'll shave this off so it's prepared, because I will be wearing this whether the colour matches or not, <laughs> I'll have to give it a go. And also, I don't want to go into that box. I'm going to have to order another bulk supply. I'm going to have to spend another thousand bucks or whatever to get myself some more supply. Now, if this company does a good job on this hair piece, I'll look at their prices and I'll go, all right, what deals have you got? And then, I mean, I know I got a free hair piece, but I'm going to make a video review for them. It not, might not be for them, it might be against them. We'll find out. But if they're good, I will go with them because I haven't really tried this company before. All right, so I'll wet this. I'll cut out my, my stencil size twice. Should get two out of it. If I get three, I'll definitely go with them. Um, I might have to talk to them about 
something a little bit darker if it doesn't match completely. Uh, but yeah, let's hope this works. And let's hope that they can give me a coupon code to put at the end of the video, to put at the end of the checkout for you guys so you can get 20% off as well. Otherwise you're gonna keep going to, to Lord Hair with the, with the coupon code. It's better to have options, right? Okay, I'll speak to you soon. Okay, so I'm just about to chop this up. By the way, I think with, with hair company stuff, right, I've, I've, I've put these into quarantine. These are the bad ones um, from the replacement ones that Lord Hair sent. See this box here, Hair Direct? I don't want to, I don't want to see, I like the boxes, they're useful for storing hair, but I don't want to see the word hairpiece written on things in my bathroom or whatever else, because it's embarrassing. I don't want people to know who visit my house. So it's important really that that is not, you could write curve, right? Or something with a logo just saying curve. I don't think you should put the word hairpiece in big bold letters because this has to go in the bin after I finish otherwise people will see uh, I wear a hairpiece and I can't have that all right this is a bit yeah so I can still only get two out of this I thought I'd better show you um, what the material looks like up close okay now I just wet it and put shampoo through it I probably should have put conditioner through it but it brushed really nicely, okay? It brushed really nicely, no tangles or anything. Felt really nice quality hair. It looks really nice as well. Um, let's pull out just one of these ones, right? This is a piece of lace that I've got going around. That's really low density, right? Very, very low density. That's a more reason, that's a medium density. That's a, that's a, that's a medium light density, but look at the extreme difference between that density and that density. I'm trying to find my fingers through the hairs, I can't, right? That's much better. <laughs> I, I wouldn't wear this ever again, right? It's just too, it's, the, the glue shines through it, right? You can see the glue through the hairs and it seeps through easily. And it's, that's not different lace material, but although that might be Swiss lace, that might be French lace, whatever. Right, anyway, it's the density that counts, right? Now the hair quality here on this one is nice as well. This is wet as well, so but this still feels nice, okay? So I find I've very rarely got a problem with hair quality in any of the hair pieces. It's usually not something that I pay attention to unless it tangles. Okay, so it's just really about density and the way the hair can be brushed. If if if, it, if it's stitched in nicely, potentially that will result in easier brushing. Now looking at through this to see. For my, my purposes, I need two partials. One definitely from the front section, and then I try to get a back piece as well, all right? It depends on where the stitching is happening in the direction the stitching is going, whether the back partial will be any good for me or not. So, now let's see if we can tell what direction things are going in. Looks like it's going towards the edge, which is Good there, can't really tell here. It might be as if it was dry or lit from the back somehow. Okay, I've lit it from the back. It's gonna be hard to discern what think what lines are hairs compared to stitching directions. It's quite hard to figure out what's going on here. Okay, so in that direction you can see it's coming diagonally down to the bottom right of the screen. That's going to the right. This direction seems to be coming down to the left. That seems to be going over there. So at some point in here, zoom right in. I don't think the phone is able to focus that, that close. Anyway, it looks like that's going that way, that's going that way, that's going that way, that's going that way, and that Hopefully it's all going in one direction. Well, let's just hope that the crown area is in an area where my stencil doesn't have too much of a problem. Otherwise, my hair will be tufting here, right? Because I'm putting on the hair, with, hair piece backwards. I just don't want that crown area to be tufting out in all directions here. 
while the front is brushed nicely, you know what I mean? That's why the front section of the hairpiece is always good for my partials, but the back section of a hairpiece is usually pretty bad. Depends on the way they stitched it. Something I should probably point out here, you see this, this front little bit of plastic that you're expected to cut off, right? Um, I think hair companies might take a lot of pride in the front hairline along there because it potentially graduates and gets light, lighter density towards the front for more realism and then gets gradually thicker towards the back. This is a problem because for me, I just cut it anywhere on the hairpiece. It, it, it's not, it's not always going to be the front for me, right? That's going to be the front for me for my other hairpieces. So let's hope that doesn't cause an issue here. I mean, it might add to the realism in this particular hairpiece, but the next time I wear a hairpiece in front of people, it will look different. And I've got this little rectangle <laughs> um, if people are able to see through the hairs because it's not dense enough. But yeah, what I'm saying is, uh, it's not too much of a problem for most people. If they're gonna wear a full topper, right, all the way around to the back of their head, because they've got a horseshoe baldness thing. But this one, let's hope that it's not going to be an issue. The problem is I don't want this hairpiece density to be different from that hairpiece density if I wear it in front of the same people on two separate occasions. And they'll go, what the hell? He had thick, lush hair at the front last time we saw him, and now this time it's really thinned out. And now it's back to full lushness again next time. He must be wearing the back partial. Two things I wanted to mention. See that ostrich tag? I always assume it's in direct alignment with the front so that I can place it there to get the best chance of getting a straight hairline. Um, it'll be dead center on the front of my scalp. Um, I could have probably got a bit further back into the hairpiece, but I don't want that crown problem to be tufting the large part. Now, when you trace around this, I've gone too close to the front edge and I'm really worried that I'll start drawing on hairs and stuff. I'll be cutting off the black part of the plastic, right? Obviously, but um, yeah, I don't want to have black texture or what is it, marker, right? So be careful when you're tracing. No point using some hair, you know, makeup eyeliner or anything. Just use a marker because you're going to cut it out anyway. But uh, yeah, just make sure you don't touch the hairs with it. The guy in the um, <coughs> glasses shop who helped me choose my lenses and everything else, he wears contact lenses, right? Um, when I say lenses, I mean I'm getting glass, I'm not getting contact lenses. I was thinking about it, but it's too much discipline required, right? And that's the reason I'm pointing this out. We have, hair wearers have a lot in common with people who wear contact lenses. Their, their management on a daily basis is extreme. In fact, I would say that people who wear contact lenses go to more effort than people who wear hair. Okay, so hair piece one, hair piece two. And excess, just to be thrown out. Let's go and try that one on. Actually, yeah, I bet it, to give it a proper review, I need to show you what it looks like at the front because only people who wear partials would have to deal with this side of it. That would be at the back of your head most of the time. I'll wear this one, okay? And if I like it, I'll buy some more. But I also need to trust that this is good because otherwise I'm paying full price for two hair pieces and I only get one, <laughs> you know? Thanks. Okay, so let me just tell you something. Well, ponder this with me, will you? The objective of a hairpiece is to make a person who's bald look like they have a full head of hair. And so it needs to look good against human skin, okay? If it fails to look good against skin, it's not a hairpiece, it's just a mop or a brush, you know? It has to look like it's integrating into the human being, all right, to be successful. Otherwise, it's just it's just hair clippings stuck to some shit that doesn't look like it's real, right? So I'm about to drum roll into holding this down against this porcelain here to see if there's any realism coming from it, okay? I'll show you the back half and I'll show you the front half. So this is going to be back half. There's guaranteed to be worse, okay? Now, what we're gonna most be, mostly be looking at is the roots and the density. This is wet, but uh, you can still tell density from it. Anyway, ready? It's damp, anyway. Let's have a look. All right, now, 
That might all come out in the wash if it's dense enough. Let's hope so. But I wouldn't dare to do it without at least trying to bleach the front. And density does hide it. You see how density's hiding it now? I would trust this much more than that low density one. If it's low density on poly, you're fucked. You might say, okay, well, good. If the density covers it, that's all you gotta worry about. But sometimes the hair's wet as well, right? So if it's wet, then you can see more details. Well, let's have a look. Do you think I should just try it without even bleaching the front hairline? All right, we'll do it raw. We'll go raw. We'll put it on the way they sold it to me, all right? I'll, I'll, I'll put this hairpiece on exactly the way they've sold it to me. But I didn't buy it. They gave it to me for free. But this is the way they sell it to people, okay? They did not bleach the roots, so I'm not going to bleach the roots. That's their job, okay? Me having to go around bleaching roots that companies don't bleach, <laughs> I shouldn't have to do that. So if they want me to do a review of their hairpiece and the roots are not bleached, we'll have to see what the front hairline looks like and I'm going to brush it back as well. So you'll see exactly what it looks like. Let's go. Okay, so I've chopped, off the, I've chopped up the two hair pieces. I'll be using the nice one, the front one that anybody who wears a full topper would wear. This one I'm putting back in the box. This is the back end with the Auschwitz tag. Most people would not consider that to be useful for the front, but when you're a partial wearer, that's what we have to do. So that usually just goes at the back of your head and people often don't stitch that nicely, but if they do, they've paid it, they've got attention to detail. The company has attention to detail. I'm pointing at this company because it's a company, not because I know it pays attention to detail. If it does, we're about to find out because I'm gonna put this thing on my head. I've pre-glued it with Hawker Tape Ultra Hold, which is the stock standard glue used throughout the entire industry. Most people who wear hair wear this. Otherwise they use water-based glue like Ghost Bond for health reasons or something because they've got allergic reaction to the acrylic contents. If I had more money or if it was cheaper, I would buy this stuff instead. This is uh, Davlin Green, this is Walker Tape Ultra Hold. This is a thinner version of exactly this stuff, both acrylic, right? Being thinner, it's easier, less like mozzarella cheese, thinner and you waste less glue and there are less lumps and it seemed to actually hold better. But it's too expensive for me to ship from America for it's about a hundred bucks to ship from America, even though that product only costs about 10 bucks or $9.28. This is the front end, okay? I have not bleached the front hairline at all, okay? I'm gonna put it on exactly as the company sold it to me, gave it to me, all right? So thank you, Curve Hair Piece Company. You're very brave letting me do this. Okay, <laughs> and I will be honest, I've already said I'm not happy that you didn't bleach the knots, but then again, no company is bleaching the knots or keeping a blonde hairpiece and then keeping the roots blonde and dyeing the rest of the hairpiece the colour that's required, which is common sense. All right. So I, I glued the back three quarters. I'll put this on, I'll peel back the front and then I'll make sure that the front is glued down afterwards. I could have tried out the tape. This is, this is just gonna be a hairpiece review, not a tape video. They gave me this stuff, right? I haven't opened it. You can't rely on stretching into position with poly. You shouldn't rely on it either with lace, but you can more because it will recoil, okay? So you really want to make sure that without having to stretch it, you've cut the, <clears throat> the hairpiece to the right uh, size of your shave zone and placed it correctly. So if you have to stretch it and you know it's the right size, lift it up and start again. Like I'm doing now. 
bit of residual glue on there, so I have to do that as well. Okay, so I could try folding it in half, try to find the center a bit better, but it's hard no matter what. Okay, trying to get the exact positioning. Okay, it's about center, as far as I can tell. My head is primarily symmetrical. That method didn't really work very well either way. Anyway, okay, I'm just going to position this corner a bit first and sort of pull the rest over a bit. Just got to avoid overhang. Don't want too much overhang. Okay, I feel like the glue drying a bit. Feels like my stencil is a bit too big or something. The way I cut it, although it should be all right. It should be okay. I'm just gonna figure out how to position this thing nicely. There might be a bit of overhang at the moment because my hands are sticky and I don't want to touch everything with it. Okay, let's look. I'm liking the density feel so far. The color looks like it's wrong for my hair matching. So they might have a colour number, say, three, although I've tried that in the past. It's usually a huge step towards darkness for my matching. So I don't know if they've got a variation of this colour, or maybe it's just the lighting that makes this look like it's a bit too light for me. I'm just going to wipe my fingers. Density feels good so far, okay. This is the, the most awkward part of putting on a hairpiece. Trying to get it into the right position. Everything after this, when you do front hairline touch-ups and so on, so much easier just to lift the front, clean it, and then put it back down. That's why it's so much easier when you go to a salon. I've never been to one, but you can imagine if somebody else was doing it for you. It's so much easier. Make sure there are no folds. Okay. I don't know why my fingers are covered in glue, but I can't get, I can't do the job until they're, they're clean, so. Still a bit dirty. All right, still a bit sticky. It's not good. You should really aim to have, it's just that I've got to rush to keep you guys entertained. Otherwise this video will be like me cleaning my fingers for ages. And an extra chore of editing. All right. <laughs> Okay, so this is a fairly clean brush. I feel like I've shed this thing as much as it needed to be after I cut it. So we'll see the brush after I've brushed it. See if it gets too many hairs in it. And don't forget, I still have to add glue to the front of the hairpiece as well. I always do that last, so it's perfect. Okay, so I'm seeing the same sort of dark roots and everything, like from Number the 0 0.06 millimeter poly that Lord Hare sent me because <coughs> they'd run out of stock because the worldwide COVID shortage, they'd run out of stock of uh, 0 0.03. So they sent me that 0 0.06 and that was just so shit. I, I mean, it's a year's supply that I bought six hair pieces cut into 12, right? I, I, I use them for about a month and then I don't want to clean them anymore because they get glue seeping up through the poly somehow and it becomes all sticky and gross and I can't be cleaning it, right? Um, so, yeah, a thousand bucks should get you a year's, a thousand dollars should get you six hair pieces, okay? 
at least. Wait, wait, wait. No. Okay, so look at it about 200 bucks a headpiece, right? That's general. I think maybe 215. But with deals and discounts and things, you can usually get 20 bucks off here and there, right? So if you buy in bulk, you save more money, right? So if you say it's 200 bucks a headpiece, what's well, two times six? 12, right? $1,200 is what you'd expect to pay without any deals whatsoever. So just trust me, it's it's a thousand bucks for six hair pieces. For me, if I was wearing a full topper because I'm so lazy, I don't want to watch wear one for more than a month. Doesn't matter if it's a top quality one or a shitty one, never more than a month really for me. I might change that later on if they become too stupidly expensive due to COVID problems. <sighs> I think I might need to chop that bit off there unless it's not placed down properly back up here. For the check. How far off is it? Well, it feels kind of like it's sort of in the right corner on that side. No real overhang up here. It seems mostly good. I might have to just chop off that bit because the hair piece is too big because of the way I cut it. So I will Yeah. Should end about there. Okay. Let's get some scissors and cut that now. Always be a bit conservative when you do that. Okay. And when you're first starting out wearing a hairpiece, there's somebody trying to ring me while I'm recording this. I wish it was do not disturb whenever you're filming. I'm just gonna wait. Okay, this stuff's good. There is something to be said about, instead of having it like that, having it like that around the edges because that would prevent any kind of slipping, but you'd really want that side edge to be perfect because it is totally visible. You can't even comb that over. It's part of the side of you, or the sides of your face, really, more than your head. I know your face is on your head, but where is it in your head? So I'm going to uh, glue this hairband. There it is. Oh, by the way, yeah, no real hairs lost in the brushing of that hairpiece. There's still some probably cuts that weren't completely shed after the haircut, but they're not loose. Sometimes they become loose after a shower, so I'll get back to you in the future about whether that happens or not. All right. This is the front hairline, so because I'm, being, I'm trying to save this as much as I can because it was very expensive in Australia to buy it from over in America. <coughs> But the front hairline matters the most, so I'll do that. Do it here. Yeah, Devil in Green is my favourite hairpiece glue.
It still has no resistance to sweating and stuff or melting in heat, unfortunately. Two separate issues, but feel like the same thing, right? Melting of glue and mixing with sweat. They feel like the same issue. But I think you'd have to solve two different issues to get that glue sorted properly. There is something called a, uh, a primer you can put on your scalp, something called No Sweat and stuff like that. And uh, Max Sport Pro or something. It doesn't work. None of those things have worked for me at all. I sweat like nut, like crazy. Uh, like a pedophile at a Wiggles concert, as my friend would say. All the time. And it's, but not, it's not as mu much now because it's winter time. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> yeah, I sweat heaps. I think I've got hyperhidrosis. So I'm the perfect person to be testing out glues and shit like that. Not that I want to be a guinea pig for, you know, dangerous experiments. Try this one. This one will work real well. Nothing will ever come off now. I don't want to be one of Gunther von Hagen's cadaver type living experiment people. He does a good service. I mean, he talks about uh, giving, donating your body to science after you die. There's no point in you being buried. It's not you anymore, is it? I mean, who are you? You're, 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 a, you're a amygdala or something, or your tongue or whatever. You're definitely not a corpse. When you're a corpse, you are not there anymore. Interestingly enough, I just saw a little documentary from BBC, I think. I'm always weirded out by the BBC presenters deciding that they need to walk. <laughs> the presenters themselves make themselves the feature of the story every time. And they're always walking, usually in some kind of safari gear or some shit, right? And what we have found is the devastation is catastrophic, right? They're just always walking slowly towards the camera in the scene, and then they stop on the mark and go, and so as you can see, these people are desperate, right? And then they fucking cut to the shit. But it's just, it's all about the fucking reporter. It should, <laughs> I want to be a reporter. You might as well just choose acting. Reporting is a different thing. Yeah, cool. Give us an anchor type face so we can refer back to, oh, that's a familiar face. I trust that person's news. But don't make yourself into some sort of, here I am sitting with the family, wondering about the time that I too was also depressed, right? It's just, it doesn't make any sense. And you might think, well, I'm talking, I'm running a hair channel and I'm talking about myself constantly. But the thing is, this is a time consuming process. So yeah. I've got to talk about something. <laughs> but the, the reporter doesn't. They're tight for time on BBC. They've got heaps of news stories from all around the world. They don't really have time to go into. When I was a child, my father showed me what it was like to ride a horse bareback. And then they show a galloping horse. But these people have no option. Saddles have not existed in this country for over 45 years. There is a shortage of leather. <laughs> Fuck, oh no. I joked myself into... <laughs> right. I just, uh, yeah, isn't it weird? They strip the skin off a cow and stick it on another animal's back so you can ride it. It is a useful thing, but shit. Just totally lives lost. And they have huge burial ceremonies for a human. Mass murdering other animals for our own luxury. If that's not tyranny and supremacism. Well, it is tyranny and supremacism. It's much worse than slavery or anything like that. Slavery's bad too. I mean, it's very bad. They're just like the slaves weren't so <clears throat> depressed about everything that they just all killed themselves and they had no workers, right? Because some of the shit that those slaves had to go through was fucking awful.
I mean, one thing that stuck in my mind is when they shipped them from Africa to wherever they're sending them, they wanted more slaves in the ships and the ships weren't that big, right? Well, they were big, but they wanted thousands of slaves instead of just hundreds of slaves. I mean, these sugar fields aren't gonna pick themselves, right? So they just fucking, instead of having like a seat where these people are shackled in, in chairs on, on, on the ship winding back and forward or made to row or whatever the fuck they're supposed to do, instead of that, they don't need them to row anymore. They've got like steam now or something. So they just say, lie down, lie down. Everyone, everyone lie down. <laughs> fucking lie down. Right? <laughs> and they're like, okay, right? And they're fucking lying down, face up, and then they get boards and plonk them over the top of all these slaves, right? They're all naked or whatever, doesn't matter. Thank you, fuck. The slaves probably care. Not that they didn't walk around naked anyway, but it's a fucking cold ship, right? Not comfortable, not a comfy bed. And they're <laughs> lying there. And then they, over the top of their faces, they just start hammering down all the next level of timber. And then say, all right, all the next bunch of slaves get in here, lie down. And they just did la like a layer cake of slaves. Like, they'd, they'd look at it in numbers, right? If 80% of them survived, it was worth still continuing to do this. And then, to, fucking insane. I don't know how they ate and drank, but I think it was passed along under the certainly wasn't enough room to sit up. Disgusting. I mean, when you talk about punishment for certain things, I mean, imagine you got caught with a joint. And they're like, all right, Thailand, death penalty. All right, or something like that. That's not worth death penalty. The, the slavers who ran these operations and anyone involved in that, just, do they deserve worse than death? You sh there should be punishment for things, I, I think. I don't think that we should all be like Jesus. Let's all just forgive. Yes, what those slave traders do all the time is bad, but let's forgive them. I don't think so, Jesus. Anyway, 15 minutes, I'm gonna, this, this will dry. Still gonna, I'm still on schedule to let my friend in by three, okay? Probably wouldn't have edited and published this by then, but we'll have a good look. I'll give myself a haircut and stuff as well. Okay, I'll be, I'll be back. I'm going to be playing chess, my new favorite game, online. Okay, so this is the glue that was on my fingers while I was trying to put the headpiece on. It made it a lot, very difficult. But the main thing I want to point out to you is that, look how dirty it is. Now, I haven't gone and <laughs> done anything that should make my fingers dirty. It just goes that color when it's been touched by human skin or something, I don't know what it is. I can't think of anything I've touched, and it, and it happens all the time. If you find glue like that, it's like chewing gum that's being driven into the road. It's disgusting, right? I don't know why it goes so dark so quickly. That's why you can't have exposed glue on your hairpiece anywhere. And that's also why the, out, the outer rim of the hairpiece along the perimeter at the back, and also along the front of the hairline if you don't keep it clean, it's very dirty. So you'll find, uh, before you have to do a reapplication, take the whole hairpiece off and clean it and put it back on, you'll find that the perimeter is much dirtier than the front hairline because during that month or what, however long you've left it before, or two weeks, let's say, before you take it off completely, you've been doing potentially twice a week hair maintenance, removing old glue and putting on fresh glue along the front hairline. So in three and a half days, I'm due to do that with this glue. But I won't change the glue back here, potentially for another two weeks. Maybe three weeks, probably two weeks, before I take the whole thing off. Okay, so I've got some hair loss there. I think that's still involved with the cutting. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. I did just chop it, okay? And it is definitely, it's definitely from being cut because as you can see, these hairs are really short. They're only this long. They're very fine hairs, I like it. I think they've given me a good hair piece, um, despite the fact that it's not bleached at the roots. We'll see how forgiving it is once it's up against skin. So that's dry now. I'm gonna press it down. Look at all these excess hairs that are clinging to my beard. All right, from the center. Just 
checking for any folds as well. I just hope these outer edges are lined up nicely. They, need, they usually are not. I'm not the best at placement. I often have to lift it and sort of stretch it back. I've got to work on that skill. All right, so. I'll start by just giving myself a haircut. Once again, I'll tell you, I'm just wetting the back part of my head so it doesn't look like it's completely the wrong color and it's obscure and it'll all kind of dry together. So it doesn't look like I've got a foreign object stuck in front of my head. Density looks pretty good from this perspective. Medium density. Not sure how bad that gap is back there. You've got to be very careful to cut your... When you shave your shave zone, be very careful not to shave an extra bit. You know, you've got to keep that same same size shave zone at all times. Otherwise, you have to kind of just leave a bit and not shave there for another month or so so it grows back. It's hard to avoid, but you just got to be very careful. If you keep your finger there when you're shaving, that means the edge of the razor blade. Okay, so right. This is the one I started with. Too wonky, right? Not enough control. Also, the outer edge is too thick. This one was nice and easy to use. Not as many blades, takes twice as long to slice everything off, but at least it's slim, easy to use, and just does exactly what I command it to do, which is what you need when you're back up here. It's not a general face shaving tool. It's an accurate perimeter cutting tool. Good density. One point. <laughs> now, my, now my theory is pretty much concreted in that the reason that hair piece from Lord Hair failed so badly and all that box of one year supply that's rubbish, the problem is it does not have enough density. That's why it was so Awful, because this, just looking at that against the porcelain, also has dark roots and straight lines everywhere from the V-looping process, but more dense, so it's hidden. But nothing hides the front hairline, which is why I always bleach it, except on this occasion, I'm just gonna try it out, because I haven't tried wearing a non-bleached front hairline hairpiece for over a year. So I always bleach it as a matter of course these days because it usually blends with the skin better. So there's no wall of hair. But the wall of hair is not the only problem, the roots are also a major problem. So once again, my instructions for hair cutting are just guess. Just start at whatever hair length. This is approximately, and just get longer towards the front. Looking in there, you can see some extreme, unnatural looking darkness, unfortunately. But somebody would have to part your hair like this to see that, because this is dense enough to hide that. Also at the wet, so, but so if it's wet, it could be an embarrassing situation. They really need to lift their game. And I think, don't worry what the other companies are doing. Try to build a product that people love. Why would you do any less? It doesn't sound that hard, does it? You start with blonde hairpiece, keep the roots blonde, 
make all your hair pieces blonde. When you, at the factory, all hair pieces should be blonde. 100% of your hair pieces, lace and poly and mono, whatever the fuck that is, keep them all blonde, right? Then dye everything except the roots to whatever color you're selling. So the, the roots remain invisible. You shouldn't even have to advertise that the roots are invisible. <laughs> it should just always be that way. That's why all these hair pieces are failing worldwide. Every hair piece I've seen failed. This will be no exception. I'm just gonna see if it's acceptable, at least for a brush forward look. I don't think it's possible for an unbleached front hairline hair piece to have a, bl a brush back look that's not a bit shit, you know? The roots have to be invisible, that's it. Five layers from there to there, right? This is the fourth layer, I suppose. Now my favorite hairstyle is the curtains that flow side to side over my side of my face because I like to have hair like Gary from Team America World Police. Use your acting, Gary. Stop being a faggot and suck that cack. Right, this is a children's show, isn't it? Don't feel like this is well cut. I'll fix it up for you. Oh, it feels a million times better than that other one I was wearing, the front hairline. But still, you still got those straight lines, right? It's just the way it has to be done with lace, all right? So the only solution, if you're gonna do the, the uh, V-loop method of attaching hairs, you have to start with a blonde hair piece. There's no, there's no way around it. There's no point in trying to invent something complicated right now because by next week, all of your hair pieces that you sell should be blonde. And then you color them afterwards. I don't know what the method is for dyeing and avoiding the roots or if the poly will absorb the hair dye color. Maybe you have to play around with different dyes. Invest in that effort this week. And then by next week, it'll be ready to go. Mass production. And I think nearly everyone, well, I think everyone, I think everyone who wears a hairpiece agrees with me. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure I'm not the first person to think of it. Blonde, of course I'm not. Other people recommend it. Read the comments in my videos and you'll see a lot of these people have some amazingly good ideas that they've said a million times and hair companies are not implementing them. And they're good ideas, they're obvious ideas. It will not cost the hair company any more money to make it the way that the customers, which you see in forums like the comment section of my videos, if I was a hair company, I'd be reading them every day. Go to all the hair channels, read all the comments. If you don't speak English well enough to read them, or Spanish or whatever other language people are buying your products in, hire an interpreter. And just hire, just hire someone to just read through them all and say, I don't know if we've got that in the file, but we'll just put a one to add an extra person said that. Yep, yep, yep. We know we've got a million people said that. I have three people have said this, but that's a really good idea. That's a high intellect idea. That's why only three people have said it, but they're right. The price to do that will cost zero dollars extra. So let's do it. And then find those three people and just give them a thousand bucks each. Just to be fair, right? 
doing your job for you. All right, no bleaching at the front. Now, with this front-facing camera of the phone, we got pretty low resolution. That doesn't look too bad, all right? But I can see, even without wearing glasses, that there are straight lines that are very visible. So, along the front hairline, for a brush back look, this hairpiece fails. As expected, the density's good. I'd say I can't tell the difference between this hairpiece, 0.03 millimeter poly, and 0.03 millimeter poly from Lord Hair or whatever, right? Can't tell the difference. It's good. Just the roots are shit. Hasn't been shedding, no weak attachment problems. Hair feels nice, good quality. Don't like the box because it says fucking the H word on it. Hair piece. Nobody wants to hear that. I know it's two words, don't know. One word. Is that one word or two words? Anyway, right? Curve. Cool, I like the name. Put the curve there, right? But don't say, for people who are fucking bald secretly and want to keep that a secret, but we've written it all over the front of the box. So everyone who comes in your bathroom can see it. This isn't a box that hides well, all right? No box hides well. I always put this face down inside containers and things so nobody can see that it's a hair on it. Nobody's gonna be looking in my boxes, but if on the outside of the box it says, fucking bald guy lives here, <laughs> right? This is the secret behind his amazing hair. He wears it artificially from dead people. Grave diggers. Fair commission. I mean, why, why waste a body? It's what, like what I was talking about with Gunther von Hagen. He says, you know, donate your body to science. Donate your body to hair companies. I mean, there's only a bit they can use, but whatever. It should, it should, there could be a, a big industry. I mean, given that we do wear human body parts, let me just put this in bed for a second. We might as well be wearing dead people's hair. I mean, it sounds dirty, but I'd want them to be freshly dead. I don't want, you know, 300 year old corpse, although that could be, you know, limited edition. That could be vintage or it might age well, or maybe hair goes, you know, it has more of a beauty to it after 300 years of being inside a coffin. No, just if somebody dies, oh, I love you so much. All right. Say goodbye to the body, everyone. Say goodbye to the body. All right, bring it around the back. 300 bucks. No, it's like 10 bucks. 10 bucks, what, what? Make 10 bucks from the hair and bury them bald. <laughs> now get, get consent. Get consent, right? Okay, so brush forward. This hair piece is good, right? Brush forward. The reason the, um, the two side hanging like that works is because even if somebody does see a little bit of hair um, hairline it's not too much to see right so this but I do have to cut it because my friends coming over and he's, he doesn't know that I wear a hairpiece and my hair's just suddenly grown four inches <laughs> or whatever right I'm gonna cut it a bit it's too too long all right Look, I'll spin, just so you can see the front hairline with proper, the proper camera, I'll spin this phone around, okay? It's just too obvious, you know what I mean? You might think I'm nitpicking, but it's true. The roots must be bleached. I'd feel better if I'd done the roots like I did with all my other hairpieces, but I didn't. So. Curve has done well, good hairpiece. Um, I don't care about packaging, just send it, send it in a plastic, a, you know, an opaque plastic bag so nobody can see that I'm fucking getting hair delivered to me. Keep all that a secret. It's like, imagine if you're a sex toys company and it says, bigblackcock.com. All right, 
yeah, I do like it long, but it's not even dry yet and it's gonna be fairly buffy. I really do love it, okay? It's, it's great. As far as what the world has to offer in terms of hairpieces, this is perfect, okay? My complaints about the roots being shit is the same as every hairpiece I've ever worn, so. <sighs> I am deducting points. Don't, don't think I'm not. But this hair company, Curve, are good. They're perfect. No problem at all. Love it. Now, what's the price? Don't know. Find out the price. I'll look into it. Um, see if I can get your 20% offer. If you put in my coupon code or something so that I can get them some more sales. And hopefully get a commission. Okay. Let's see. I'll see if it can tolerate muck. Maybe I'm ready for some muck now. Muck is really, you would never use this on low density hair, but if, if it's thick enough density, you can get away with it. It does dreadlock your hair a slight amount, so it's not flowy anymore. But I really ever wear hair product that keeps the hair sort of flowy. I usually want some sort of hold. I feel so relieved having hair piece that is not showing the fucking disgusting low density. I don't want extreme density. I need the right amount of density. This is the right amount of density. This is medium density. There's always a worry these days with COVID and everything that companies are trying to cut corners and put less hairs in or some shit. Just go to the fucking graveyard now. I'm telling you, there's so much hair down there. Okay, so the good thing about this um, positioning, I, I chose the right direction to place it on my head because the hairs are flowing forwards. That's why they keep springing back forwards, which is great. It would do well to have a shorter haircut if I wanted to just keep it nice. I'm gonna sort of brush it back a bit. Um, I might cut it before three o'clock, but probably not. I might have to just spray it with hairspray so it doesn't move. Oops. Oh, I thought I saw a fold. You don't want to fold. No, it doesn't look like there's a fold. Okay. So this is, I think, 0.03 millimeter poly from Curve hair pieces. Um, I haven't bleached the front hairline this time. That's the company's responsibility, but they don't do it. Um, yeah, aside from the roots, it's perfect. Packaging, don't be writing that shit on a box that people might see. My friend's coming over, so this box is going at the bottom of the bin. All right? A box without a lid is no good to me, so. It was a good quality box. It's a pity they have to write that shit all over the front of it. Okay, yeah. Nobody wants to see the word hairpiece written on anything, all right? It's all shh, right? Do you understand? You don't want to see the word fucking dildo written on something? I don't get dildos personally. I'm just saying, if you, if your mum has to go to the post office and pick something up just quickly, all right? I'll be back in a sec. Bye, kids. All right, and she comes back. And, mom, and the kid's like, what do you got? What do you got, mum? She's like, nothing, nothing, darling, nothing. What does dildo mean? Daddy, what does dildo mean? Right. So you don't want that shit written on the box. Apart from that, the hair piece is good. You can see it's good, right? Feels good. The hairs are nice. There's no tangling going on. No shedding on day one. As I say, shedding can happen after a couple of days of showering where the hot water causes the poly to potentially bloat and therefore the, the locked in hairs can loosen somewhat but it should go back to normal or you know I mean you people are advised not to brush their hair straight after a shower but you have to that's how life works you get out of the shower you brush your fucking hair that's how it works so if it can't withstand that it's failed 
and I will give this a, more of a fail than it not having bleached knots in a, in a silly box if it does shit. So far it hasn't shit, which is good. Density is good. Colour might not be exactly my colour, but while it's wet, it seems like it matches so far. But we'll find out when it dries. But you won't, because I'm going to go, see ya.